Our world is crippled with a virus. A virus that targets the weakened mind, body, and spirit. This virus is known as selfish bitterness, and it finds its host in the hopeless broken heart. It is highly contagious and has many symptoms. The most deadly is hostileness towards others, or in other words, bullying. Bullying can be spread physically and emotionally and is now inescapable due to the exploitation on the internet. Although it might seem like fun and games to some, to others it is extremely detrimental and life-threatening. Among young people, there are about 4,400 suicides per year, and bully victims are two to nine times more likely to consider suicide. And if not moved to suicide, the negative living conditions of bullying are still life-altering. The person I am now, a big part of that comes from being bullied as a child. When I was little, I didn't have a lot of money. I was pretty much homeless and I, I didn't have the cool clothing. I didn't look very fashionable. And a lot of people would insult me because of that. However, even though I looked like that and I got bullied for it, the person I was then I would listen to my friends, I'd love to talk to people and get to know others and that social interaction, I loved getting close with people. Thing is though, as I got older and as the bullying got worse between name calling and people actually taking action against me for looking the way I looked, then it made me start to compromise my character. I started to buy the type of clothing these kids wanted me to buy to look the way that these kids wanted me to look so I would fit in better so that I wouldn't have to deal with the insults and people coming up to me and telling me how terrible I looked. Because of that though, I lost who I was before. I didn't care to talk to people, I didn't care to get that social interaction from someone. I just wanted the bullying to stop, I just wanted to stop getting insulted for how I looked. And in doing so I lost who I was. One of the most tragic problems about bullying is that victims are usually forced to walk in opposition alone. Many times friends are either too afraid or more concerned with personal status than to help. Even parents find out when it's too late, or they hold the mentality that it's just what kids do. But my friends, this is ignorance. You're either against bullying or you're for it. I had a friend who was a victim of bullying and I stood back and I watched due to fear because I didn't want to intervene and in doing so that made me for bullying. You know, that's not what friends do. You know, friends would, would stop the problem, help them, but I didn't. Although our initial reaction is anger, we must realize that bullies are victims to selfish bitterness due to the heartache of past experiences and insecurities. And to deny them the comfort and friendship they need would be treason to the cause of bully awareness. Think of it this way. If the root of the problem is the insecurities of the bully that lead to the branches of aggressive attacks which cultivate the growing fruit of broken and hurting people, then why are we only focused on cutting back the branches hoping that the fruit grow healthy? when we must shift our attention to the roots that in time will change the whole tree altogether. The thing is, this generation doesn't understand what love really is. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things. If we can learn to love selflessly, then we are nothing short of a revolution. It takes one willing heart to start a revolution. Are you willing?